Okay, the topic of this talk is going to be the uh, Tarahumara and the Pima Indians revisited and the relationship between their diet and their health. Okay, so the Tarahumara and the Pima used to be adjacent populations. There was a separation of Arizona from Mexico in the Mexican-American War, 1848. Pima got pulled into Arizona. The Tarahumara have stayed in northern Mexico along the Sierra Madre Mountains, Copper Canyon, Ch Chihuahua. Um, the Pima now eat the standard American diet. They used to eat their old, you know, traditional diet like the Tarahumara. This is a picture of the Pima Indians, what they used to look like, you know. This is probably taken around 1900, I don't know the exact date. But, you know, very fit guys. Um, I had just read about, uh, you know, George Washington and the Revolutionary War, and they asked to fight the Indians, and, well, that's a different Indian population, but still, very physically fit. I mean, look how powerful this guy is. This guy looks like, a, you know, a top-notch athlete, all right? All these guys are skinny and fit. So, anyways, that's their baseline population eating their traditional diet. Here's a typical picture of uh, the Pima population nowadays. Tremendous amount of obesity. Tremendous amount of obesity. Gallbladder disease and all the Western at diseases of affluence that go with a high-fat diet. Okay, here's a picture I said, you know, just drawing what the difference is. The Tarahumara are world famous. They can run 100 miles in, in a day pretty easily. And a lot of uh, famous American runners have gone out there to visit them, like Ruth Heidrich and some other ultra-marathoners. And they're for real. Um, there's a guy by the name of McDougal, not, not the famous Dr. McDougal nutrition doctor, but another one who wrote a book about them called, I think it was Born to Run, something like that. Anyways, the Pima are, you know, worse health than the typical American even. They're really fat, tons of gallbladder disease. You can make a living as a surgeon out there just doing a lot of gallbladders versus, um, you know, in a plant-based population, there's going to be hardly any gallbladder uh, gallstones because gallstones are cholesterol stones. So it's high uh, blood cholesterol leads to precipitation of the of the cholesterol in the gallbladder and stone formation. They don't eat a lot of fiber with the standard American diet, so they're constipated. That means dry stool on the right side of the colon. That means it'll plug up the appendix. And then the mucous glands beneath the, <clears throat> the fecalith, you know, the big calcified ball of stool, keep making mucus. And so the appendix stretches until it perforates. Um, that's a perforated appendicitis. Back pressure straining at the stool constipation. They get a sigmoid diverticulitis, often treated with surgery, sigmoid resection coronary artery disease, so they end up with a cabbage, coronary artery bypass graft. So this is a typical thing. And by the way, I see this stuff every day. Every single hospital in the United States that takes care of inpatients, there's endless numbers. This is just typical stuff, okay? Every doctor knows all these abbreviations in two seconds, all right? BKA, below knee amputation, see it all the time. Diabetics usually get, you know, mostly foot amputations, but eventually it leads to a BKA. All right, so anyways, they're a disaster. Their health's an absolute disaster. All right, so here's a little bit on the Tarahumara of Mexico. This guy, um, uh, William Connor, he was a real good researcher. He knows uh, Colin Campbell. So here he is looking at 532 healthy Tarahumaras, age 5 to 70 years of age. Average plasma total cholesterol, 125. So that's good to know. Their average cholesterol was 125. The average American's about 225, about 100 points higher, okay? Uh, their average LDL was 87. The diet of the Tarahumaras was very low in fat. They are estimating about 12% of the calories from fat. I've seen other estimates of their diet being anywhere from 9 to 12% of the calories from fat. Uh, protein was a little higher than I would have expected. It was 13%. Okay, so what did they eat? They ate most of their calories came from corn and from beans and from local greens. And now here's what I think is perhaps most interesting a virtual absence of hypertension and obesity. And, the, and you know, their cholesterol is not going up. So when you eat a low-fat plant diet, you don't get uh, all the Western diseases. Okay, here's another paper. This one's also by William Connor. And what they did this time is they took the Tarahumara and they decided to feed them sort of a, a diet similar to the standard American diet of that time. This paper was written in 1991. So there was, you know, plenty of meat uh, and eggs, not as much processed food as people are often eating today. One thing I did not like about this study was the, the Tarahumara at their baseline were eating about 2,700 calories per day. In this study, they were eating up to 4,100 calories per day. So what had happened is, you know, that might just be a normal thing is that 
when more pop when more calories are available and cheap, um, a person might eat more. But you know, it kind of distorts the data if they're eating way more calories um, in this follow group. So the whole point of it was to see what happens when they eat a high fat diet. It's a little bit interesting. Okay, in this paper, they go into a little more detail about their diet. Also, they mentioned that, you know, with Dennis Burkett, Trowell was a friend of Dennis Burkett, any population that goes from a traditional plant diet to eating a more westernized diet, initially meat and oils, but now in the modern world, more processed foods, they all get fat and sick and plug up their arteries, okay? It's just expected for that to happen. So in a little more detail on the Tata Humar diet in this paper, corn and beans, vegetables, fruits, and small quantities of game, fish, and eggs. So there's no naturally occurring population that is 100% vegan plants only. I recommend 100% vegan plants only because if you've lived in America and you ate in, you know, a westernized meat and processed food diet any part of your life, you almost have to detoxify your body. Plus, it's hard not to... You know, it's like an alcoholic. You tell them no alcohol, not one drop. A former cigarette smoker, not one cigarette, not one puff, okay? And by the way, uh, William Connor describes this as being the traditional diet of Mesoamerica, Middle America, for several thousand years, and it is nutritionally adequate. That's another thing you know. The Tata Humara were incredibly physically fit. They could easily run 100 miles in a day, okay? So what am I saying is they didn't need to eat flax and chia and soy and all this BS. All these modern Americans, like people think they have to eat, they have to eat estrogen fat. I think that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. I don't even get that. You know, it's just peer pressure conformist, low IQ BS. Okay. Anyways, the Tatahumara, the name means fleet of foot. They value running. They're slender, excellent uh, cardiovascular condition. They have no hypertension. Hypertension is the number one risk factor for uh, for stroke, for atherosclerosis and um, becoming demented as well, all right? So none of that, all right? Um, they're rich in intake of nutrients, they're fine, all right. Okay, so let's see what else on this page. Um, I talked about the different amount of calories in the diet. Okay, a little more detail on uh, Tata Humar diets. That's why I included this slide. They eat primarily pinto beans and the corn, and they would make the corn into tortillas, and they'd also make a drink called pinole, where they would they'd mix the corn with water, and that was a drink. And then we talked about the fruit, the vegetables, tiny amounts of sugar, egg whites. Well, they might have added that, and I'm not sure if that was all there in the coffee. I don't know if they added that, his William Connor group, because I'm not sure that was immediately available to them in the past. Okay, in the affluent diet, what did they feed them? Cheese, butter, lard, egg yolks with white flour. The tortillas made out of flour. They gave them soft drinks, table sugar, um, a little bit of jam or jelly. Uh, they put butter on the tortillas. Um, and anyways, the reason I mention this is what they gave them was a high-fat diet in the ballpark of 40% fat, but these are all still relatively whole foods. So this is a little bit of paleo diet, low-carb diet. So people will say the advantage of a paleo, low-carb type diet is that they're avoiding processed food. And so what I'm basically saying here is in this study, Connor fed these Tatahumara persons for five weeks, what we would consider sort of paleo carnivore diet, okay, or uh, low carb diet. Low carb just means, uh, you know, eat animals, you know, as Dr. McDougall says, and that's what it is. Um, okay, so again, the problem with the study, they're eating significantly more calories. Um, the fat was about 40%. On this one, they estimated the fat 20%, but that's different than other papers. Other papers had their fat 9 to 12%, which I think is more accurate. I think they were giving them a little eggs or something. There. There's something a little weird about that component of the paper, but just to mention it in case anybody cares about that. Okay, and here's what gets interesting about the paper. All right, when they fed them the high-fat diet, at one week, there wasn't really much of a change in their lipids. But at, by the time two weeks happens, boom, their lipids jump up a big amount. And they stay about the same for the whole five weeks. You know, their LDL jumps up. Um, their LDL at baseline was in the 70s, and it jumps up to around 118 or so. Okay, now here's a paper. So that previous stuff was all about Tata Humara. Now here's a paper about the Pima. Okay, and again, for every paper, you know, you got to take the good with the bad. And so what's good about it is somebody's writing about the Pima and giving you some lab values on them for their cholesterol numbers. What's bad about it is 
they decided to only measure the lab values on the PIMA who were non-diabetic. But that's ridiculous because tons of PIMA are diabetic. So this paper is going to make the numbers seem much better for the PIMA than they actually really are. Um, and so here's the numbers for the PIMA, the ones that are not diabetic. So these are like the healthy PIMA. So the healthy PIMA men, baseline total cholesterol, if I'm looking at this chart here, probably about 180. Baseline for the women looks like it's probably, from looking at this chart, maybe around 175. Baseline uh, triglycerides for the men in the ballpark of about 145 for the women in the ballpark of about 125. So these are, this is like the pre-diabetes phase of, of being a PIMA. Okay, so, you know, it's, it's not it's not completely accurate of what's really out there. Okay, so that's all I've got for slides, but like, what do I see to summarize this lecture? I'm making the point that when you go from a plant-based diet to sort of a carnivore, keto, low-carb, uh, whole food, large amounts of meat diet, you get significantly worse blood lipids and they also gained weight when they did this and you're going to gain weight, you're going to be fat and sick. But if you saw my earlier lecture also done today about the Nauru, when you switch to eating mostly processed foods, the whole thing gets much worse. So, you know, remember I made that dietary pyramid, you know, when you go from <laughs> you know, whole food meats, grass-fed beef and all that, you know, you're fat and sick, but you get a lot fatter and sicker when you eat more of these processed foods and more oils. Uh, so anyways, uh, that's it.